Hi everyone, this is our second attempt to get you a training session on working with fairy tales. As most of you know, I guess, um, Tanya and I had this brilliant idea to do a live demonstration yesterday, but I'm afraid technology uh, was against us and it didn't quite work out. We're a little over ambitious maybe. But I'm going to keep it very simple this time and just talk to you about how I work with fairy tales. Just to put me in context, my name is Pauline Andrew. I'm director of Barnabas Counselling Training and also Deep Release. Barnabas does the qualification courses and that's with CPCAB. And Deep Release does your CPD after you've qualified. And we have a range of courses that cover working creatively in all kinds of ways and with all kinds of subjects. And we also have a level five certificate in integrating creative interventions, which is a very exciting, relatively new course, which we're all enjoying very much. So that's me as a trainer, which is most of my life. I teach the level four diploma and the supervision diploma and the creative course. And I also have a small counselling practice and supervision practice here in Essex. So what about fairy tales then? What's the big deal about them? What I'm going to do is explain a little bit about what the work is and some of the theoretical background to it, give you some examples and then work through how I would work with a client and I'd like you to have a go. So if you can find a piece of paper and perhaps some coloured pens then you can be creating your fairy tale adventure with me as we go along. Let's begin with what is a fairy tale? What do I mean by a fairy tale? Well, let me give you some examples. Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, The Princess in the Tower, Hansel and Gretel, Goldilocks, uh, Snow White, Little Red Riding Hood. It doesn't have to be a fairy tale that the counsellor knows. I've worked with some people from different countries and they have their own fairy tale, their own folklore. Um, it is a lot easier if we do know the story, but it's not absolutely essential because we focus on one particular scene that the client has chosen to work with. And the fairy tales, as we're familiar with them, mostly Grimm's fairy tales, as we say, Grimm by name and Grimm by nature, but Disney has um, sanitized them and made them a bit more cheery. They contain all the big archetypes the hero, the damsel in distress, the, the witch, the helpless child, the goodies and the baddies. The main storylines are in all the key fairy tales that we know. You don't have to worry about political correctness because the way I work with them, they are all aspects of who we are. You have your own internal helpless damsel and rescuing knight on horseback. Uh, you have your own goodie and your own baddie inside and they're a fantastic way for exploring aspects of the self. And that will probably remind you straight away of the drama triangle, the persecutor, rescuer, victim, those three aspects of not only who we are, how we relate to ourselves internally, but also of course to other people. Um, TA, transactional analysis, has the parent, the adult and the child. And to be honest, you don't have to worry too much about the theory, but some of you might be quite interested in it. It borrows a lot from Gestalt, for those of you familiar with that, which says the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And we really are essentially exploring the different parts of who we are and who the client is in the fairy tale uh, metaphor, if you like. Um, Gestalt also talks about unfinished business. And this is absolutely key because the theory is that your fairy tale chooses you. You might think one's just popped into your head, but unconscious processes are at work. And you'd be surprised at what emerges that draws you irrevocably back to something that needs your attention. Something perhaps in the now, something in the past, but something that isn't quite whole, isn't quite healed. And so it can produce some amazing results in, in client work. And I have to be honest, this is one of my favorite ways of working creatively. How do I begin? Well, I actually like to get my client's core fairy tale quite early on in the relationship. I'm quite clear in my contract that we will be working creatively. 
and if people don't want to work that way, if they, for example, want CBT or a, a very purist person-centered approach, I would suggest that there are other counsellors far better than me for that. But if they're willing and up for working creatively, then I can, I can offer some interventions. The core fairy tale is the first fairy tale the client chooses. And as I said, that tends to be their core script. But I will invite them throughout the time we work together, and I do work relatively long term, um, from time to time, what's your fairy tale today, is an interesting question to ask. As you work, hopefully, have a go yourself, it will be what is your fairy tale today. It may be the first one you've done, or you may have done them before. But just stay with me in this, and if you feel you're getting a bit emotional or it's a bit too heavy, then just stop and just put the pens and paper to one side, and you're welcome to carry on watching the video without, obviously, without doing it. So as I mentioned before, the first question I ask is, what's your fairy tale today? What is your fairy tale that's come to mind just now? I might give a list, like I did at the beginning, and see which one is sharpened in the client's mind. And the next question is, what is the scene? Okay, sharpen that lens a bit further and choose one scene from the story. Yesterday, um, Tanya chose a scene from Cinderella and uh, Cinderella standing, looking out of the window, surrounded by the uh, animals and the birds that were her friends. And we, we worked with that. And I've got with me some examples of, of pictures that clients have drawn for me because that's the next thing. We draw it very simply. You can use stick figures if you want. And actually I would recommend you use quite a large piece of paper, something like A3, and have lots of colored pens around because colors can be important. I remember once working with a client that I had a great big sheet of flip chart paper and all the pens were out and I asked her to draw herself um, the scene she was seeing rather in, from the fairy tale. And she drew Cinderella um, sitting by the ashes in the grate as a tiny, tiny little figure that she drew in the bottom right hand corner of this huge sheet of paper in pencil. I think um, it was quite a challenging exercise for her because that's all, all the worth she had. She felt she was worthless and it was such a powerful, powerful image as I looked at it. Very poignant, very sad. So the first picture I'm going to show you that one of my clients drew, and by the way, uh, just for the record, I have full permission to share these pictures and these stories with you, is the scene from Sleeping Beauty where the the kiss of the prince, the handsome prince on horseback, awakens her. This is a scene that has been chosen a number of times by different clients and with differing, with differing reactions. One is the longing to be awoken into a reality, into a greater depth of living, to sort of come out of this emotional state of nothingness and to find who am I really? Will somebody wake me up from what feels like a a dull, lifeless existence. Another one wanted the moment to last forever. She didn't want to move on into a different life. She just wanted connection. There's a lot of attachment issues come through strongly in the fairy tales that, uh, that come through that you'll recognize. Another one that I worked with, she didn't want the prince to come and rescue her at all. She wanted to be her own rescuer and she was really clear about that. So. Just because people choose one particular story, it does not have the same meaning each time. One of the uh, most powerful ones that, that I've worked with is the princess in the tower, which is a very strong image of defenses, boundaries, um, barriers to relationship. And uh, I'll show you now one, a picture that was drawn for me where the princess or Rapunzel or whoever it was, it doesn't really matter who it was. Very often neither the counsellor nor the client can remember the actual story. But there she was in her tower and shes you can see in the picture there's a great big speech bubble coming out and she's saying, get me out of here. And this is a client who longed to be free, who longed to get rid of all the boundaries that stopped her having real and important relationships in her life, but she didn't know how to break free. In that particular one, it was quite funny really, because I, I just instinctively wondered about a question that I risked, we'd been working with this picture for quite a while, and I said, am I in your picture anywhere? 
And she thought for a minute and she said, oh, I want you with me in the tower. And I said, well, that's a bit of a problem. And she had described the tower as had no door. It had quicksands all around it. Uh, this is many years ago and I can still remember it quite vividly. And no one could get anywhere near her. And then I said, what, do you, what, what can we do? How imaginative can you be? So she thought for a minute and said, I know what I'll do. I'll draw in a medieval catapult. And she just happened to have this great rock in the, in the tower, of course. And she dropped the rock onto the catapult and I sailed through the air and landed inside the tower in a perfect trajectory to land and be with her. That was such a brilliant example of the creative imagination. And so she wanted me there in, in the sad place of her life and she found a way to get me there. You begin to see that the picture starts out as the original one that the client chose, but then begins to develop. And I'll go through that with you as we go along. Just one more to show you here, and that's Little Red Riding Hood, which is a very often chosen one. Here's Little Red Riding Hood walking through the woods to Grandma's house. And this conjures up many themes of, um, of danger, of trust, of deceit, and of abuse. And there is a little bit of warning about working with fairy tales because it can take you to quite deep places perhaps even places that have never been recognized before. I have had that, I've had memories come up. The unconscious has led the client to a specific memory of abuse. And so you have to know your client well and have a good relationship with them, a good enough relationship with them when the fairy tales start leading you in a certain direction. So those are just three examples and I'll give you some more as we go along. But for now, what have we done so far? We've chosen the fairy tale, we've chosen the scene from the fairy tale and we've drawn it. That's part one of the exercise. I'm aware you, you might already have some questions that you want to ask and unfortunately with this not being a live session I can't see them coming up as, as we tried to yesterday but I will be happy to answer any questions on the Facebook page when uh, we, put, we publish hopefully this video for you. What I ask the client to do first of all now that the picture has been drawn is to give the picture a title. And this is a feeling title, something that comes from the gut. So I ask them to tune in to what's going on for you emotionally as you look at what you've drawn and, and what is the message that comes through. This is, I do this first because it's really important that we get uh, with the client's agenda. As a counsellor, you'll be looking at the picture and having all sorts of wonderful uh, imaginative journeys yourself. But this places it in the client's world. It might look, for example, like a really happy picture, but the client is feeling sad. And so the title is the first thing that really lands this firmly with the client's own journey and own story. And having got that, I would then say, let's put down some of the feelings that are around. And I actually get them to write this on the drawing and again choosing colours for the different feelings they have. There's often a, a mix of feelings. I ask them to just go with what comes up. You don't have to, at this stage, have any idea what the feeling is there for or why it's suddenly come up. Just go with what is happening to you as unconscious processes are beginning to come up to the surface. Let's get it down. Let's have a look at what's going on. And there again, just to, uh, to repeat what I said earlier about this process of resolving unfinished business. Unconscious processes are busy at work using the symbolism of the fairy tale characters. Very often you will assume that the client is the main character if there is a main character in the picture. So if it's a picture of Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty or Little Red Riding Hood, it can be tempting to presume that is the client. So I always overcome that by saying, are you in the picture? Because it's not always the case that the client is the main character. She might be someone else or he might be just an observer to the picture. But obviously most often the client is the main character. 
you will have noticed on the uh, princess in the tower picture there was a speech bubble coming out and, and this is a very key part that we begin now to give voices to the different parts of the picture and every part has a message Gestalt would suggest that we need to look at all the different elements of what the client has drawn. And so what is the character saying? What is the message coming from that? I actually do ask what is the message coming from? I, I would have said to my client with the princess in the tower, what is the tower staying, saying? Um, what is the quicksand saying? What are, what are the, the bushes and the brambles saying? And just to ask the client to go with what instinctively comes out. And it is quite extraordinary what, what will come there. I um, want to show you uh, another picture here of um, a client who chose Goldilocks. And it was the point where Goldilocks had sat on the little bear's chair and broken it. And her title was, That's Done It. And the words were fear and panic. And this is, I remember this vividly, that it was one session that she'd come in. We'd been in therapy for perhaps three or four years by then. It was a very long-term client. And she was very, very distressed and couldn't put words to what was happening. And so I said, let's do a fairy tale. And immediately she saw the picture. And this was the terror and fear of her child self when she made a mistake when she broke something or forgot something and the fear and the panic would rise and what the fit picture was actually uh, highlighting was her rage at the injustice that she'd just been a little girl and it was an accident that Goldilocks didn't mean to break the chair but she was very angry with the chair and you'll see one of the, um, the speech bubbles Goldilocks is saying stupid chair you made me do this and now I'm in trouble. You'll also see that there are two other messages coming out. It serves her right, she deserves to be punished. And another message, well, I don't care. And in there you have a variety of voices and messages inside her head that were swirling around. And she was actually then able to tell me what had happened able to connect her feelings with an event that had caused all these different emotions to come flooding in. And uh, she was now able to focus on it and look at what had happened to her in a very, very painful childhood with a lot of abuse in. And I've never forgotten that. Uh, I found this picture again uh, recently and uh, she had given me permission to use it in another context and I'll, I'll trust it's okay now. Sadly, she is no longer with us. She died some years ago, but this was a very powerful time that was moved us forward as I understood more what it was like for her as a child. Just before I finish, I want to give a plug for another book that I have found absolutely fascinating. It's by Sheldon Kashdan and it's called The Witch Must Die, The Hidden Meaning of Fairy Tales. I was absolutely riveted by it. I strongly recommend it. It gives some wonderful insight into particularly the bad guys and the good guys and their importance in the fairy tale stories. That's not necessarily essential for what this kind of work requires, but it's just very interesting if you're interested in the whole topic as I am. I think you'll find that a, a very, very good book to read. So I've just gone through basically, let's just rehearse the principles again. So what's your fairy tale or what's your fairy tale today? What is the scene? Sharpen the scene. Draw the scene for me. And, uh, and then give the scene a title that comes from inside, not Cinderella being kissed by the prince, but awakening or um, terror or joy, you know, whatever the client brings out as the title tells you where they are, which might be quite different from what you're thinking at the time. And then we add the feeling words. And then we go around in each element of the scene, checking out if the client is in the picture. And if not, would she like to put herself in the picture? By the way, that's another question you can ask. And uh, to actually give message, voice messages from each element of the picture, a speech bubble like in a cartoon, so that everything in the scene has a voice. 
uh, within reason, but the main elements of the picture. One thing I don't think I did say is if you've got a very confusing picture with lots of different things in it, a very good intervention is to say, where would you like to start? Or whose voice can you hear the loudest? Which message is coming most strongly? And it's fascinating how usually the client knows instinctively what the answer to that question is. So we give the speech bubbles and we just go with what's coming up, what this is raising for the client. We add more feelings and then just basically saying, do you need to add anything? Do you want to change or take something away? Always leaving the option of a scene two so that we don't overcomplicate uh, the original drawing. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. And as I said earlier, do feel free to put some questions or comments in the post when we put this up on Facebook. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to answer them, not quite as interestingly and immediately as when we're live online, but hey, at least we got a bit further than we did yesterday. And I really hope you've enjoyed it. And so enjoy doing some fairy tales. And I hope you might have done one for yourself today and that it raised some interesting thoughts for you to ponder on. Thank you.